Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. You might remember I was playing with this and this is to convert various RGB signals into something you can play on your VGA television using a GBS board inside. So this is our sort of project and I had a problem with it because it would not work quite properly with this. So I identified the issue is there's, um, it's how the video sync is derived and the GBS units don't particularly like what these things are putting out and that's not just this MSX but also Antari ST and I suspect the BBC Micro many things probably don't work with this so my solution was to use these yes these little tiny guys boom and these things are the LM1 881 video sync separator and if you want to see the data sheet for that you can there it's right here actually and we'll just have a little let it focus and we can see what it does it basically takes an input uh, signal somewhere composite input signal here and it splits it into all the different types you get the composite sync out the vertical sync out the odd even out and the burst slash back porch output so you get all sorts of goodies so it's a real fantastical little chip and it's pretty darn cheap and all it needs is a couple of really minor components I'm hoping I have on the shelf somewhere. And that's two 0.1 microfarad um, capacitors here. And I'm guessing that's kind of basically a decoupling one to remove any DC signal coming in on pin two there. And then there's this R set. I'm not sure what that is. It's setting something but it doesn't matter because it's a reference uh, circuit here just copy that and it will work basically and then you need the 5 to 12 volts uh, input here again on my unit it's fine I can derive that from the the hardware in fact I might even just build this into my hardware but I think first we'll just attempt to make a little PCB and test it all externally because this is what you can do and not only that if you make one of these you can probably fit it into the back of a SCART shell if it's something that you're going to do regularly you could put it in the back of your own SCART so onwards and upwards let me have a little play and see how we can assemble this I've been scrounging around the parts box now trying to find the suitable resistors and capacitors for this and I'm really struggling. So I found some uh, capacitors that are pretty much there. They're not 0.1 microfarad but they're 0.09 something so I think they're close enough. So as for resistors I found a 1 meg pot which we can just adjust down and get it to 680k or if we don't want to mess with a massive pot like that I found these and these are really interesting have a look at these these are half watt wire round resistors and they're sort of crazy these are like old school tech um, and I've had these for decades literally for decades and every now and then I found a value in these I need well this is a 360k which means if we put a couple of them in series we're gonna be a bit over the top but probably it'll work my guess Look, it doesn't even, it's not even able to test it. Come on, no, no, that's me not putting it in correctly. Right, come on, test. <laughs> it just does not like this thing. There we go, 371k. Pardon me. <coughs> so, yeah, I don't know really. I think... I think we'll put these back as a sort of curio and we're going to use that pot and as this is a sort of test circuit I don't think we're too worried about it if you can just imagine though how tiny this all this will be with the correct surface mount components it'll just literally be an order of magnitude smaller than the IC itself in fact I'm not even sure they make a uh, surface mount version of that uh, LMIC but you know we're we're just going to carry on with what we've got. So I'm going to put the tester aside. We won't need that. We're going to measure up the resistance to this in a moment. Just have a look at this bit of board I got. I think I got this for free when I've uh, ordered some PCBs. I think that was maybe uh, PCB way sent me those, so which is kind of cool. So first things first, let's get out one of these chips. And we want to make sure we kind of study in that while we're playing. And if you've got ICs like this, just make sure you put something on the end. The amount of times I've picked up a tube which hasn't been adequately sealed and it's just dumped all of its contents out. That is so annoying when that happens. So that'll stop it. 
So we're going to really want to only hook up a few of these pins, but fortunately, because of the nature, let's do it all. Let's do it all on the data sheet. Sorry, because of the nature of this sort of test PCB material, nothing's actually hooked up. So you've got to kind of hook up all of the connections yourself anyway. So let's just get the chip and pop it on somehow. I mean, uh, I'm not really that bothered even about using up the whole of this board, to be honest. But let's have a look. We're going to want our connections for power between uh, pin 8, pin 4. So pin 8, 4, 2 and 1 we're looking at. So pin 8, 4, 2 and 1. So let's see if we're going to maybe use these as your uh, inputs. Pin 2 and 1. We could mount it maybe that way. So one wire would be going from here, one from here, and then the other two there. That's kind of neat. And we could use that. Oh no, we have to have an output there too. So, so we're going to be doing some messing around on the underside, but I'm just I'm just sort of playing really. It just it doesn't really matter because you're going to wire everything up, but if you can get it sensible, it could help you out. And then we're going to go between here and here. I mean, might just solder those in and then work out the rest as I go along, basically. But if I'm trying to make it kind of neat, that's kind of how you could do about it. But then I've got this dirty great thing here. <laughs> so maybe I'll just leave a little bit of allowance. If I do cut this PCB, I'll just sort of whip it across and then I can fit in a proper resistor when I get hold of one. But let's zoom in and start soldering. Focus. Let's do that. So all you've got to do with these boards is hit them with some solder. And if you see people using them, you, you can kind of... There's little tricks you can do. Some people use solder to bridge the pads and just kind of create a track with just plain solder. Others leave the component legs a little bit long. So you can see the component legs are long and then bend those over. So that works too. My capacitors have fallen out as I was discussing. But I'm going to do, I'll do one with one of these capacitors. In fact, let's let's get that main IC in. And then I'll show you uh, that sort of tracking technique with the capacitor. So it's a bit of an odd uh, value really when you're talking like 600k. We don't, it's very rare. I mean, I don't think I've ever used values that high in anything. And all of the little adjustables I found, the biggest um, adjustable I've got, apart from obviously this one, um, was about 200k. So there's our little doodad. So I've decided I'm going to go, the input has to go via this capacitor. So let's put it like so, shall we? So we're going to go from this pad, this pad will be the input and it's going to track across and we're going to make a, a tracking around. Let's see, does that make sense? And then we've got to do an input. Tell you what, let's just pop it like this for now. No, nope, that's fine. Sorry about, uh, you know, thinking on the fly here. There's, so many, there's options basically when you're doing this and just, you could just... <clears throat> There's an infinite, a myriad of ways of doing it, but I think I think we can get away with it here, actually. I'm just going to... There. We're locked in now. So I'm going to just take my tweezers, and we're going to bend this over, because this is going to be going to pin 2. And I haven't checked the orientation of the IC, but I'm assuming this is pin 2, and if I'm wrong... Much cursing later on, maybe off-camera. We don't want to lose our YouTube channel over some cursing. So we're going to solder there. And I'm going to give it a moment to... Uh... It's the problem with these old components as well. They're kind of dirty, so they just don't want to solder. Is that actually in? It is kind of in, yeah funny old thing. So there's old components in the box. They tend to get all sorts of gunk on them. 
corrosion, things like that. So you might need to work on them a bit, but that's fine. It's still better than not being able to do a project, isn't it? So I'm going to cut away the bit of spare we've got there, that spare leg. And then I'm going to just basically try to join this A to B here. I'm trying to make a track. And you can see there, it's not actually doing it. Oh no, it did. It did do that. But then I've got to go from B to here. It's, it's going to get impossible unless I add some bonding wires. But let's just play with it, see if you can. No, it's just a pain. I'm just going to, you see, I'm just banging that out just to get rid of that solder. So we do need a bit of wire. Now you've got all sorts of options for wire and you know my my usual one of just reusing component legs if you've got them lying around. So I do have a little pack of detritus and it's got a magnet in it and it just has some bits and bobs like that. And what I've done of course is now I've filled those holes with solder just to make it all that little bit more tricky for me. I'm going to get me solder sucker my solder sucker so you've got you've got again options here so you can either push the uh, tracks through or as I'm gonna do here just because I'm lazy and you can see what I'm gonna do I'm just going to take my tweezers and bend them so I'm just making a little 90 degree bend don't worry I'm gonna zoom in and show you what I'm up to and I'm just going to tack it. I'm, I'm surface mounting it, basically. Surface mount. We're all about the surface mount technology, after all, on this channel. Which will end up something like that. And if I was smart, I would have made an S shape so I could just do the final bit so it could land on this pad, which is where I'm ultimately aiming for. But let's just see what, what japes will occur when you try to uh, solder this thing down kind of expect it to stick to the soldering iron and start tombstoning. I think that's down actually. Hooray! And there you go. And you can just tack it down in multiple places if you want. And then we've got one final connection which is to this pad here. And uh, you don't need much for that. But again, it's nice to just cut them reasonably long. The the reason being that when you heat it up, there's a good chance it will try to escape. So you can see I've just so just basically tacked it on there just so it's, it's there. And then I'm going to just move it, manipulate it with the iron. In fact, it wasn't really there at all. It's there in potential. Potential. Just a touch. Yeah. So it's ready to go. So the next one we need to do is its partner one, which is going to come from here. So I'm going to just uh, do that, I think, offline, because you've seen me mess around with this enough, and then we will review the circuit. I've been busy, and now I'm done. So you can see I've shaved down the PCB. It's a little bit smaller than its original size. Just a little bit of a hack there, and I've smoothed the corners so it's looking ever so pleasant. So let's go through the basic circuit and just be aware this big old thing would be removed and the resistor just placed in these two pads <laughs> once I get hold of one. And you can see all of the actual circuit joining, the tracking is done on underneath. So I'm going to flip over and then we're going to go through it. So first things first, and quite flimsy wires, these just temporarily, but here is our VCC coming in. And it's coming down to here, and that's pin 1 right there, where it says A, that's pin 1 of our IC. I'm talking nonsense, aren't I? That's pin 8. <laughs> In fact, it's right there. Gosh, I just sort of confused myself there. Let's just rattle through that then. So that's pin 8. And just to flip over, we've got pin 1 here. This is pin 1, the actual pin 1, which is the um, synchronised... Uh, sync composite sync output so that's the output of our device and I've put a loop here so I can connect it to clips because I've got test probes on my equipment this is the input here coming in going via our capacitor to pin 2 pin 3 we're not using 
that's the vertical sync output and then pin 4 is ground and I've put another probe loop for now on there so all these can be removed and replaced with wires in the final final circuit and then I'm going to show you this bit here so we've got uh, pin 8 as we mentioned earlier then we've got pin 7 which is the odd even output which we're not using at all and then going down to here this is pin 6 and it's going out to here and we've got a capacitor on the other side of the board between pin 6 and ground so pin between pin 6 and ground we've got this capacitor on that side of the board and on the top of the board we've got this pot which is representing this 680k resistor so it's pretty simple to make that up, just sort of make it up as you go along really. And it comes out as quite a nifty little board. I'm pretty sure you could get this tiny, you could probably just make it without a board at all. So I'm going to now set up all the equipment and see if we can get this to actually do something useful for us. We've got our circuit hooked up and it's actually wired in to my unit. So it's basically getting its power, I'm going to point with my little finger here, it's getting its power from the main circuit. So I wanted it to be running off the same voltage rails and things like that, which is kind of cool. And looking at the oscilloscope, you can see it does work. So the top value is the output from the unit and the bottom is the input so it's clearly working and something you can do this is a good demonstration is I can twiddle the knob on my units so you can actually see how you can actually adjust the sync levels there so yeah, that's cute isn't it that's cute and you can see as the output goes underneath the threshold both are just getting messed up so that that's kind of working now something I haven't figured out yet though is it's not working in terms of the output if I I have been fiddling with this I have been able to get it to fly, flicker up from time to time from my Sony MSX hit bit so I'm now in full debugging mode so I'm really hoping I'll be able to get to the bottom of this weirdness it's been many hours later so I thought I'd show you what I've got up to and that's kind of the best I've managed to get this at the moment it's not particularly great it's a bit wibbly wobbly however it is it is kind of usable it is kind of usable so what I've had to do it's odd the signal coming out of that bad boy by the way is really good I even added you can just see there that little orange potentiometer so I could adjust the input signal and even if you attenuate the input signal really low it still puts out a really nice sync so it's a great chip it works really great at what it has to do but what I've had to do there you can see that big yellow wire that yellow wire goes all the way back to the input so basically if you see on your board by that little header there is a nomenclature on the board that says ground ground VSHS SBGR and what we've had to connect is the S to the VS so the sync to the vertical sync and that's the only way I can get it and it's not even in the RGB mode of the um, GBS so one of the modes on the GBS is the sRGB this is one of the other modes that when I sort of flicking through the different modes and it's the only one that I can get a bloody picture on right now so I guess this is kind of a successful video in that that unit with the LM1881 is really good and it works well um, and you can see I found a different resistor there to try on it and actually I'm not even sure that resistor is needed for the actual uh, composite out that we're playing with oh, sorry is it composite out yes the composite sync however um, you know add it if you're making the circuit uh, with regards to everything else regarding the GBS, that might be a video for another day because it certainly seems to have a mind of its own and most of that time its mind is being belligerent and bloody awful. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye.